Look, Kasumi and Gudra is a problem. Bro's got a big old metal shell and is not afraid of anything. We've got insane bulk with its 100 defense, along with 150 special defense, and it's even got good offensive firepower. Its steel and dragon typing can make it a pain for common dragon checks, and it even has two solid ability options in Sap Sipper, which can raise our attack when we're hit by grass moves, or Shell Armor, which makes this thing immune to critical hits, which works well for what we're cooking. If you want Gudra to literally never die, we can run Curse to boost our attack and defense, along with dropping our speed. We pair that with Gyro Ball, which is a stab steel move that becomes more powerful the slower we get. We can throw in Earthquake for defensive answers, or even Body Press to be extra evil with all our defense. And because of its natural special bulk, after some curses, this thing can literally be impossible to kill on either side. To make matters worse, we can actually run Rest to get right back to full HP, and then pop a Chesto Berry to immediately wake ourselves up. This Gudra can be absolutely evil, and I'm totally here for it. So look, Kasumi and Gudra is like the prime example of a guy that looks pretty innocent, but is always just an absolute menace, and this thing never wants to die, and this set can be super fun to use and annoying to play against. But today we're showing some love to the guy because Kasumi and Gudra does not get enough of it, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so the Pokeballs are flying, and we are met with an abominable snowman. And this thing, as a lead, is pretty good for my Lycanroc. Now, Lycanroc is here to, you know, set up Stealth Rock. It also has some fun shenanigans built in with that Focus Sash. I can then go for Endeavors and then Priority Accelerock once they're down to 1 HP once they hit me. But first, I'm just going to lay down some Stealth Rock. I definitely feel like it's going to be useful here. And another good thing going against an Abomas Snow is it more than likely just wants to set up that Aurora Veil, which they are going to go for turn one. So... It's more than likely this thing has that light clay, and it's kind of the role on the team to be able to make things more bulky. And also, as I can go for the close combat here, I know that I'm faster. Sadly, it does have that 50% defensive buff because of the snow. So it is able to take it relatively nicely, um, but it does drop my special defense to the point where obviously, you know, Giga Drain is going to bring me down to one, which isn't the end of the world. This uh, Rockweiler over here, this is kind of this thing's idea, is to be able to get down to one and then just endeavor and hopefully be able to priority knock it out, but in this situation, I'm just going to be able to go for that endeavor. As it is going to bring it to one, however, they can just knock me out, you know, with an earth power. Predicting the potential switch there. I just stay in, and I feel like it's a pretty worthwhile trade. I'm burning up turns of that Aurora Veil while in the process of being able to take care of this thing, or at least get it down to one, where now it should be easy. So, looking at the matchup here, I decide to go into the more Pico. Now, the reason is because... This thing, he's just a, he's the sickest little hamster, you gotta admit. But also, I do this because I know that I can go for that aura wheel. I spin on my little hamster wheel going crazy, and that does knock it out, of course, just at 1 HP. But more importantly, it does now give me the speed boost, and now I know that I'm gonna be faster than anything they have on their side. Which, they're obviously gonna go into something that can take attacks from this. However, as I bust out in my hangry mode for pretty much no reason at all, other than looking sick... I can now just uh, decide what to do in terms of potentially going for uh, things like a fast parting shot. So, they decide to go into the Lycan Rock of their own, and it's more than likely this thing wants to, you know, just set up the Stealth Rock, but I do want to go for that parting shot. It's going to dampen this thing's offenses to the point where I can bring in pretty much anything, and the team I'm working with has a lot of setup opportunities. So, with that parting shot, it gives me a position knowing that I can switch into any of my setup mons here to... I not worry about taking attacks too much now. I decided to go into the Crawdon here. Mr. Craw is here. Big meaty claws looking delicious and ready as they do go for that Stealth Rock. So I'm essentially able to get in a free switch while also, you know, knowing that with that parting shot, I should be able to take an attack from this thing, kind of depending on what it's working with. And as, you know, I do threaten this thing with that Aqua Jet, they obviously have the Aurora Veil up. However, I'm going to go full Sharp Claws on them. I'm going to go for that Swords Dance. As they're actually going to go ahead and uh, they're going to commit the terror, which is not super ideal for the Crawdont setup here, but at least they're going to be able to get this out of the way. So as they go for the Terra Fairy, um, this thing looking ridiculous with the damn heart on its head, I'm going to go for that Swords Dance. So we're dancing around here, I'm now at plus two attack. Adaptability priority Aqua Jets are going to be extremely scary. The problem is now this thing has Stab Play Rough, and that is why the, the uh, parting shot is extremely important, because that actually allowed us to barely live that somehow. Uh, which is honestly kind of crazy. And now I can fire off an Aqua Jet. Sadly, however, freaking Aurora Veil is annoying as tits. And I do end up knocking myself out to the Life Orb. But I'm kind of fine with this trade-off. Because not only do they use their Terra, but also I got some good chip on this thing. 
they're running low on you know, the Aurora Veil turns and we've already knocked out the Obama Snow. So as I'm looking at it here, Gudra's here to do two things. First of all, have a fat ass snail tail, check. And second of all, cause a little bit of a ruckus, which I'm planning. So I do come in, take a little bit of stealth rock chip, no big deal. And as I'm staring at this Lycan rock, I'm feeling like I can easily just get off a nice little curse. They're probably afraid of something like an iron head. And the plan is to boost our defense and attack and dropping the speed is also pretty beneficial. So they decide to go into the Electivire on the likely, you know, steel move, which is a nice play. But I instead am just going ahead and throwing some swear words out there like SpongeBob on that one episode. And at plus one defense, I'm feeling like I can easily take, you know, an earthquake from this thing, whatever it wants to go for. And also pretty timely, the Aurora Veil is going to go away. So at this point, I'm thinking, you know what? There's no reason for me to not go for a second curse. As it turns out, this thing's actually going to bust out the Focus Blast, actually, aka Focus Miss. And it does exactly what Focus Miss does best. And it does not hit me. I have a massive target literally on my back as this shell, but sometimes you can't even hit it. So that now allows me to set up a second curse. And honestly, I do mess with the special Electivire because you don't see it all that often. It doesn't function pretty well as a special attacker. So this now allows them to go for a Focus Blast again. Does connect this time. However, Gudra has so much natural special bulk that we honestly take it super nicely. And then an Earthquake just sends his ass to the Pokemon Center in the sky, and that feels pretty good. So I'm actually in a pretty damn good position here with Gudra, of course. I've taken some chip. I don't have recovery in terms of leftovers, but you already know as the Dragapult comes in, I'm thinking I should, I could potentially rest here, but if it's physical, I know that I can take at least one more of these. So they go for the Dragon Darts, and that is going to hardly scratch you, boy. We're looking depressed as hell over here, but... There's no time to be depressed when Gyro Ball just obliterates everything and down goes the Dragapult. So, <laughs> we are on a pretty good spot here because I still have a decent amount of health left and we've got the old rest in the back pocket. So, as they bring in Young Shoulder Pads, aka Armor Rouge, take some nice chip from that Stealth Rock. And as I'm looking at it here, there's a good chance that I can take an Armor Cannon. They are going to go ahead and fire one off at us and I'm like, okay, Gudra, it's time. It's nap time, baby. In the middle of the battle, Imagine the disrespect. We're able to take it, live at 15 HP, and then just go right to sleep, which is the funniest thing ever because <laughs> we do still have that Chesto Berry, uh, keeping it stored in the old shell, and I don't know how the hell you eat stuff while asleep, but I go ahead and pop that berry, and now we are awake at full HP with two curses, and Gudra is showing exactly what this thing's made of. So they're just gonna armor cannon, cannon once again. And while it looks badass, Gudra does not give a damn. I mean, it does kind of hurt a little bit, but this is why Gudra's typing is amazing. It's also super fun being one of the only dragon types that doesn't give a shit about fairies. And then I can just go for that earthquake to finish off the armor rouge. So I was rolling with body press on this set. It does work really well also, but it just seems like earthquake utility comes in handy a lot. So that takes care of the armor rouge. And once again, Gudra popping off. So. They are now down to two Pokemon left. They do have this Scizor in the back, which is potentially threatening with like a close combat, but at plus two defense, I'm fine. As they actually end up going for the Thief. So Thief Scizor is actually kind of kind of tight because it does work with that technician. You can switch this thing in on knockoffs and steal items. Um, but it turns out this thing, that's all it's going to have in terms of coverage that's not <laughs> uh, resisted here, being a steel and dragon. So... I'm able to finish it off with two earthquakes like no problem. Basically just got a couple scratches on the shell, but live to tell the tale out here. That's literally what Gudra does. This thing just lives. It's actually, it's so funny. So final Pokemon is heart shaped Lycanroc. And we already know that uh, at plus two defense, I'm feeling pretty confident about living an attack here. They do go for the now stab play rough, which actually does not miss. But Slime Shady is the absolute goat. I'm able to live it, which is just the icing on the cake. And then I just fling my huge tail at him in a rolling fashion. And that's going to take care of the Lycanroc. So that is going to do it for the match. And that uh, Gudra is a damn problem. If you are not prepared for this thing, you're going to have a bad time. And it's actually pretty fun to use. So Hisuian Gudra, one of my favorite Hisuians. And that showcased it pretty well. But we do have one more match for you because this team has some shenanigans ready for you. So... Going up against a team that has, obviously, some big threats in Palafin. They have the Golden Go. There's, a, there's nonsense over here, and you hate to see it, but we're going to see what we can do. Let's get into it. So, this time, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the set of keys. I don't know what the hell Pokemon was thinking when they created this thing, um, but every time, it bothers me. Also, why is it float so high up there? Literally, I, I don't know. Any, I, I don't know. But, 
I, of course, have the Lycan Rock because this thing is is kind of cool. So they actually end up going for the Thunder Wave turn one because if there's one thing that Klefki does well, is just being an asshole. It can Prankster, get up that Thunder Wave before I can even set up my Stealth Rock, but luckily we do not get fully parried. And I imagine, you know, Klefki at least is predictable in that most of the time it's just going to be kind of like a spike hazard lead, you know, with that Thunder Wave and potentially like a Draining Kiss or something for an attack. So at this point, I'm just going to go for the close combat. Now, considering switching out here, I don't have, I don't deal with this thing super well. He, he's high as hell up there. I can barely reach the damn guy. But luckily, Lycanroc can jump. And a close combat is a two-hit KO here. And uh, I feel pretty safe going for that just because I know that they're setting up hazards. As they do go for the spikes, kind of fine by me as I do have hazard control in the form of rapid spin on the Morpico. But it's going to be a little bit more difficult than it seems because they have the Golden Go back there, which is always an asshole on rapid spins. And mostly, you know the drill. So I decided to go for that second close combat. It is going to not be able to kill because they, in fact, did set up a Reflect, which is, again, pretty annoying. So honestly, I'm just feeling like I'm just going to stay in here, go for one more. Um, with defensive drops, I know this thing can hurt me a bit, but they're just going to opt to set up some more spikes, which is... Kind of fine by me, there's nothing worse than stepping on some spikes barefoot, but, I mean, it is what it is. And uh, I do finish it off with a ton of close combats, and now I'm like, my de I'm a defensive wet paper bag over here. So, on the empty switch, and they decide to go into Palafin, which is kind of expected because most of the time they're going to bring in the Super Dolphin and try to just, like, basically switch it out and then come back as a damn hero. And I, I know that being focused, Ash, I can actually make something happen here with a potential uh, for like an endeavor. So they go for the flip turn. Obviously, with my defenses, I do get knocked down to that focus, Ash. And I'm really just hoping I can at least get some value out of the Lycan Rock. But it turns out Buddy is, in fact, smarter than that because it does go into the Golden Go. And as a ghost type, I cannot endeavor this guy. But I do break through the Para, which is just sad to see because they do go into the fucking string cheese guy. And that sucks. So. I decide, you know, Golden Go, I have a decent defensive matchup here with the uh, with the Hisui and Gudra. Depending on kind of what this thing's working with, you never really know. I Honestly, most of the time I default to like a trick set or something, um, or potential for like specs. So, they do go for the Shadow Ball as I bring in the Gudra here. I got that tail looking like a thick-ass bowl of oatmeal over here. And I do get the special defense drop, which is actually wildly unfortunate, because now... I'm not feeling super confident about staying in here, and while I had the Earthquake coverage, I'm going to go ahead and save the Gooey Boy for later. I feel like there's definitely some value to be had with this thing, and uh, I decide best course of action, probably just to switch into the Lycanroc here. I'm going to die to the spikes, but what that does is, that gives me a little revenge switch in, and uh, that often is going to be able to put me in a spot where I can you know, at least get some momentum, and at the cost of just losing the Paralyzed Lycanroc. Now, I could have saved it to try to rapid spin and get it back in later, and try to endeavor, but not worth, because now I can just go right into the tripod dragon. So, I've been working with this high dragon that is physical. Mostly just nobody expects it. And dragon dance, scale shot sets with this thing kind of go crazy. So, I'm feeling like I should be able to take an attack from this uh, golden go here. And that's going to allow me to set up a dragon dance. Because most of all, I figure they probably swap out anyway. In the fear of this thing being like, uh, be able to outspeed it and just knock it out. So I go for the dragon dance as they are going to bring in the kitty. So Masquerada comes in, probably surprised to see the dragon dance, but he does get a free show. I'm just dancing on the pole over here, feeling hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza. So I'm mostly ready to be able to handle this matchup against this Masquerada because as I'm looking at it, I feel like this thing's going to click triple axle on me or something and it could be scarfed. I don't know what this thing's deal is, but I'm going to go for that Terra Steel and. That is going to help me out against a against a freaking triple axle. What it does not really help out against is a play rough. And while they do transform into the fairy type, it actually in fact misses, which is like, hey, that's kind of fine. But then the problem becomes now this asshole's a fairy type, and I can't touch it with my scale shot. So that was an awkward ass turn. I'm just standing over here like an idiot with an axe on my head for no reason. And so here's what we learned from that matchup. The Meowskarada actually moved first, meaning that thing is definitely Choice Scarf. And they obviously switch because they don't want to stay in, you know, locked into the play rough. So they're forced to get out of there, but it's actually really good intel to know, you know, that thing is going to be a Scarf. So I go for the Earthquake here as they're going to bring in the freaking Garganackle. And of course, behind the Reflect, an Earthquake does you know, not too much to this thing, but it does go away, which is pretty solid. So I'm thinking, you know what? I don't know what this Garg thinks he's going to be able to really do to me. I didn't look like a Minecraft idiot and just be defensive, but they're actually going to go for the Terra Water, which is just going to be uh, to cover for dying from the next Earthquake. 
But here's the thing. I know that that Meowskarata being Scarf, if I go for another scale shot, I can actually get a second speed boost and then be able to outspeed that thing. And then we got some stonks going with the crazy dragon boy. So I go for the scale shot here on the now fountain, crazy salty fountain boy. And uh, even with the five hits, it is going to be able to live because, again, this thing is just an absolute dick. So I now get a defense drop, but I do get a second speed boost. And they're actually going to go for the iron defense, probably just thinking, you know, I go for that non-stab earthquake and then could potentially recover. Problem for this guy is now I just get to take a nice little watery bite out of him. And uh, that's going to be able to finish it off. So Garganacle going down comboed with that Terra honestly feels amazing. And Hydreigon is in a pretty good position here, just because of the fact that I have two speed boosts. Bad news is I do have a defensive drop, which is no fun, because as in comes the Super Dolphin, this thing is really kind of leading me to believe it's going to be like a choice banded set. And at the health that I'm at, I know I can probably take a priority jet punch if it's not. The problem is that defensive drop comes back to bite me because I do in fact die to the priority jet punch. And that kind of sucks. So down goes my win condition I was feeling like, and now we've got some interesting shenanigans on our hands here. So on the revenge switch, I decide, you know what, I can actually pretty freely go into Slime Shady. I'm feeling like that thing's choice banded. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but it, uh, it, it feel, it, Buddy's feeling banded over here. So as I go into Slime Shady, I'm going to go for a curse. Surely, you know, they're not going to stay in here and just go for another jet punch. And that's going to allow me to get that nice little defense boot. So... They're actually going to end up switching right back into the Meowskarada here, and that feels kind of fine with me. Now, one of the good things about Gudra also is you can kind of bluff the fact that I could be Sap Sipper. I mean, obviously, they're not, they're not going to go for a, a Flower Trick anyway, but with that defense boost, I'm feeling like I can definitely live at least one attack here, I mean, depending on what they want to go for. So, with that curse, I'm going to go ahead and take a little nap here. Feeling like me on a Saturday just cursing and sleeping, they do go for that knockoff, and I'm actually able to live. So... Good news is, I live, obviously, and I can now go for the rest and get back to full. Bad news is, they knocked off my goddamn berry, and with that thing laying on the ground, my sleepy ass cannot find it, and that kind of sucks. But, I do get back to full HP, I have a curse under my belt, and looking at what they have left, I'm feeling pretty good in this matchup. So, I now obviously have to burn some sleep turns, and we're just going to go ahead and see what they want to do here. So... They obviously switch out. We know that thing's scarfed. It can't go for another knockoff once I already lost my item. It's not going to do much. And they decide to go into the other weird derpy dragon boy. So as Dragonite comes in, good thing is the Stealth Rock's going to knock it to obviously lose its multi-scale. And they're going to take this opportunity versus the Sleepy Boy going for that Dragon Dance. So they're trying to set up on me. And as I take my second turn to sleep, I'm thinking, okay, so... This could be very bad. The problem is, Dragonite with those Dragon Dances can definitely sweep the rest of my team. And it's kind of just up to Gudra at this point to finish off this matchup. So, I do wake up, and they actually end up going for the Roost. It turns out to be a really good play for them, because that brings them back to full HP. And then they get that boost on the defenses, and uh, a Gyro Ball actually doesn't hurt that bad. So, this now allows them to go for a plus one Earthquake. I am able to live, however, and then a Gyro Ball definitely is enough now. Without that multi-scale to take care of the Dragonite, and that is extremely clutch. Just because of the fact that that Dragonite was definitely their win condition, and my ass would have been in the graveyard without, without Gudra clutching it up there. So, that feels amazing, as now they're down to three Pokemon left. There's a few things that sucks. First of all, you know, I can't really take an attack now with the Gudra, especially because they do have the Drain Punch coverage. So as Gudra goes down, we did a good job. But it, what also sucks is that uh, they have three very scary things left. They have the Palafin, they've got the Golden Go, and Meowskarata. Three of just some of the biggest, th biggest threats. And I just happen to have some little guys. So here is the situation. They lock themselves into the Drain Punch. So I'm pretty free to go into the Clefable. Now, this is not no regular piece of chewed gum you find on the sidewalk. This is a special boy, and that is because I actually am a physical choice banded one, just for shits and gigs, because why the hell not? And as I know their easy switching is going to be Golden Go here, I can actually predict that and go for the knockoff. And as the Cinnamon is the Winamon ass guy comes in, he gets knocked off and probably did not expect Cliff able to be throwing ass and throwing knockoffs out here. So that takes care of the Golden Go, which is actually... One of the huge steps to me being able to pull this pull this game out. So, Golden Go goes down, and now they have two options to switch into. It's obviously Mouse Karata uh, or the Palafin. They are going to bring in the Kitty Cat. So, 
What kind of sucks is I'm choice banded and locked into the knockoff, and while it did allow me to kill the Golden Go, I cannot go for a Drain Punch here, which I would love to do. So they just go for the Flower Trick, and I feel like I can actually take one of them. And honestly, choice banded Clefable, Buddy kind of hits hard, I'm not even going to lie. Also, they lose their Dark Typing, so now it's a normal hit, and it actually leaves it with literally 1 HP. So... We get rid of that choice scarf that was bugging us earlier at least, and at this point I have a decision to make on kind of what to do here. I decide it's in my best interest to just let the Clefable go down, because as this next flower trick is going to finish me off, I do have priority with the Crawdont. So we got ourselves quite the interesting endgame, and this can go a couple different ways here. One of my biggest opportunities I feel like would be to try to get in more Pico to get a speed boost and then be able to outspeed uh, the Palafin back there, but it has the Jet Punch and more Pico is not going to be able to get off an Aura Wheel and outspeed this kitty. So, I decided to go into the Crawdont. Now, I have two options. Either I expect to switch into the Palafin or I just go for the safe play in Aqua Jet here, which is just going to take care of the Meowskarata. So they do stay in, luckily for me. And that is going to finish off the Meowskarata, who has been a menace. So, we've got ourselves a little two versus one situation. And uh, it's not looking great for me because, of course, it's freaking Palafin, who is coming in like a damn superhero. So, this thing does have a little bit of chip. It's at, you know, around half here. And I know that they're going to pretty much drain punch here. They're faster than me, so I'm kind of forced to just go for another Aqua Jet to just try to get some chip. It is not going to do a whole lot of damage here. And uh, after some life orb, definitely going to be able to uh, be knocked out by a Drain Punch. And down goes the Crawfish. So here's the situation. I have one baby hamster versus a superhero overpowered dolphin. And there is two ways that this can go. First of all, if this thing is a plus speed nature, it, it will be able to outspeed me. And I am weak to a Drain Punch and I die. However, if it is rocking adamant... Which is what a lot of these things be working with, just because the uh, Terra Water paired with the Priority Jet Punches can do a lot of damage. I will be able to outspeed in that case, and I am still Electric type, so I have the coverage. And now it is time, and guess what? They are working with an Adamant Nature, and more Pico is able to come in insanely clutch and finish off the game for us. And so I thought that was just a, a pretty ridiculous game, kind of full team effort all the way around. And uh, shout out to Gudra for saving us versus that Dragonite. But thank you guys so much for watching. This was a requested set that a lot of you have been leaving in the comments. And I really liked it. If you guys want to see some more stuff, go ahead and leave comments. I definitely read them all. And I do appreciate all the support on these videos. And uh, again, thank you guys so much. I will catch you next time. Peace out.